Hey, Chris Lipe here with How to Sing Like Mike Patton. And I have a confession to make. I've been dragging my feet on this one for quite a while, even though lots of you have been asking for it. Because <laughs> this guy, there's just so much to his voice. And the format that I've been doing a lot of these Sing Like videos in, I didn't feel like was good enough for someone like Mike Patton. If we could listen to longer examples, then... Uh, that might help us uh, really connect the dots with what he's doing in his voice. There's a lot that he does, I know intuitively and in a book smart way. I haven't worked into my own voice yet. Still working on it. And I would imagine that within a little while, there may be a part two where I can put an addendum on here and be like, I've cracked the code. So be patient with me there. We're taking a little bit different approach with this video than I've done on really any other Sing Like video in that I'm working off a compilation of live performances so that we can work with longer examples and truly capture the diversity with Mike Patton's voice. And particularly with a vocalist like Mike Patton, we are not going to try to sound like him. We're not going to be able to sound like him. You're going to sound like you. I'm going to sound like me. But we can glean from what he's doing. It's about adding licks to our arsenal. It's about adding perspectives to our voice to diversify and become a better vocalist. And please do yourself a favor and sign up for my free vocal course linked below to take a lot of these techniques and approaches that I'm using in this video a huge step further. I get nervous all the time. I'm nervous now. Um, but vocally, you know, I don't know. It's, it's like I feel comfortable in every situation. Okay. Let's listen to him talk a bit. He's kind of low and raspy. He doesn't have anything supernatural going on in his speaking voice. This should be a huge encouragement to us. Keep this in mind. He talks just like anybody else. There's things that he's doing with mixed voice, with compression, with uh, all sorts of other techniques that I'll unpack. Uh, that's what gets him his diverse sound. Placement is another huge thing. Let's keep going. He's got a good sense of melody. Okay, this is a real basic thing, but he's down here at the bottom of his range, you can tell, because he then goes to Fry. He doesn't have that low of a voice, but what he does have is the ability to be very resonant uh, and you can see it his face is loose so he's feeling you can you can get the sense that he's feeling the resonance in his face this is so important for every vocalist he's got this down even in this simple example Okay, let's talk about this voice. This is a very deceptive use of mix into what I believe is pure head voice. And he's doing it with a closed mouth, which is very difficult. But if we can start in our head, closed, relaxed, Your head there. I've just approached mix and you hear it get a little, little brighter. It's a clean mix. Even going down into some chest. Practice connecting your resonances together, starting. You can hear him thinning out, thickening up, becoming more brash. If I were to open up, it would sound more like this. Whoa. 
he's disguising it with that that closed mouth hum. Very traditional sounding here. There is a a traditional approach that we're going to see more in some of these other samples and a placement. He is unapologetically more traditional here than he is a lot of other times. If we focus on an open throat, ah, relax, dropped larynx position, feeling the resonance in our face, it almost sounds a bit operatic. Ah, I feel as opposed to where you'll hear him some other times. Ah, la, 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 la. You hear him more bright, more whiny. He's able to go in between easily and even within the same song or the same phrase. It's part of what makes him so compelling. Right there is a great example. La, 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 la. And then he goes into a relatively thin mix, but he's not doing this. La, 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 which he can do and he does in other times. But here, if you listen to what he did right there, there's that, there's that Cornelian sort of divergence, right? Darker open throat and compressed and bright when he's up there and then he darkens down. Oh man, what the Oh man! Totally not afraid to be a, a character. <laughs> Love that part. Oh! He lets his. He lets that crack happen there. He goes thinner. <laughs> now, listen to that. Listen to that tone. The money and there's this lower Freddie Mercury vibe that's happening there. Let's practice going in and out of these different tonalities. And before we go too much further, yes, I am going to get into his aggressive singing as well. There will be some good screams to get into and digest and try and practice. But we have the darker sound, lower living positioning, and then we raise our larynx and put it through our nose, and we whine a bit more. Sometimes it's gritty, sometimes it's clean, but there's that flexibility to go through it all. This is the kind of liquidity we need to have in our voice to even approach the throne of Mike Patton. The other thing we're going to notice, and you heard this when he was talking earlier, we need to get our lower range compression extreme compression down so that we can do this at any level and pull it up oh, yeah. we need to get that down and not have it de be dependent on being in a certain part of our range more than more on that to come Very star nasal, yeah. 
think that's background vocals, but he can still hit that. La, 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 la. I need your love. I want your love. Very different sound, right? This is not what he just did. Ah! It's not that. What we need to do here is summon the feel of the yawn. I need, I need. Put that extreme in your voice. Get that sensation in your body to fully contrast it with where we just were. La 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 la! Right, that's very different. Higher larynx position, more nasal. Yawn! A yawn opens up your throat even to another level. And then when we start going into those higher voice, those higher notes, and we start thinning out, there's this sort of approach as opposed to this. Right? I need your love. I need your love. I want your love. I want your love. I'm pushing up to that in kind of an awkward way. I want your love. There we go. Summoning the yawn. Such a good example. With the sky. With the sky. Open yawn. Oh. Let that vibrato come through. Be very theatrical too. Ooh. I'll just sigh. Sigh. He's got that stage whisper thing down too. We've talked about before. Okay, this is a perfect gateway into his aggressive singing, okay? I've talked about this in other singers, but, and he did it with a little bit of what he was doing in the last example, you can hear some of that stuff coming into play, but here, we need to take the form of a creepy loud whisperer. Some people call this a stage whisper. This is not, hey, I'm not a regular whisper, no. This is a form of compression and leaving our normal, our, our primary vocal, vocal cords open. So we end up getting this sound. <sighs> lift something heavy. Uh, uh, lift something heavy. And let the air through without engaging our vocal cords. It sounds like we're going to choke. But as we put more air through here, we can create this sound that is not pitch driven, then we can intermittently create a bit of uh, vocalization with our primary chords to put pitch in where we want. But this is the foundation of a no note or pitchless sort of scream. He's doing this on a quiet whisper, but it's actually not that quiet. It's not that loud either, but it's not this. It's not like you're trying to be quiet. You're trying to be aggressive and non note, non pitch. Uh, yes, it's creepy. Marilyn Manson's good at this as well. You, you. You can take this into various parts of your range and develop lots of other sounds, which we'll see more of in the samples to come. Yes, if only. There we go. And then he puts this voice in. He's still compressing. He's putting his primary chords in with the sound. 
So we have this, which is highly compressed air going through the area above our larynx. And then we add a bit of a vocalization from our primary chords. And we still get this highly compressed sound. It doesn't hurt at all because we're actually saving our vocal cords. If we place that grit and that uh, compression, that's that feeling of holding back air too low, it's going to trash our voice. <laughs> going back and forth. Yes. Oh. Oh my God. There's another good opera operatic note there. Now going between those to open up very much makes that transition between opera singer approaching it from the yawn camp to opening up. talk about that yeah if he's gonna if he's gonna add to his voice in that uh, mixed range he's flirting with his vocal break there to get that extra grit yeah. Oh, yeah. And those inconsistencies are that I'm displaying are feeling out exactly how much grit we want in there, how much vulnerability. We can go really far. Yeah! Or yeah! That, what I just did, is a bit more along the lines of what he's doing in this example. But it's neat to know that we have the range and the flexibility to approach it in different ways and pull out different things. That's what he does all the time. That last little scream there, high mix, approach it in head voice first, oh, get it clean, add your support, enter your mix, your clean mix, now if you need help developing your mixed voice, absolutely join my free course and check out lots of other videos I've done on mixed voice. We don't have time in this long video of Mike Patton samples to really unpack how to enter mix but let's get here with this screen i'm going to get from my clean mix yeah! and then i'm going to let my voice break until i feel that sensation of my upper throat engaging then i'm going to lean into that and i'm going to use the words i feel i feel He has a very good blend between that 
supported open throat approach and using the appropriate amount of compression, holding back air, to create a very engaged, belted, belted sound. See my video on how to belt for really that, that sound. Never gonna keep you up, never gonna let you Never gonna make you, make you cry. Never gonna make you cry. What's interesting is the amount of compression that he has, that he's using, that's not gritty compression. This isn't, never gonna make you cry. No. Never gonna make you cry. And neither is it well, uh, fully open. Oh, never gonna make you cry. Right? Never. There's a bit of compression to the point of breakup, but not quite there. Never gonna make you cry. With the open throat, with the dropped larynx position, that gives him that sheen. I'm never gonna make you cry. Oh, never gonna make you cry. Right? That's very different than this. Never gonna make you cry. Or, uh, well, lots of the other ways that he sings, right? But it's that. Holding back a bit of air, keeping the larynx dropped, keeping the throat open, letting the vibrato happen as well. Hurt! Right there. Hurt you! You could hear the compression going to the point of breakup there. Or grit, not breakup so much. Okay. Now, this is really good because he's giving us some gateways into what he's doing, right? He's not just screaming, but if we back this up a little bit and listen carefully. I'm just going to say, go back. Go, go, huh, huh. Start, start making some of these noises, but let's, let's be intuitive while we're doing it. What's he doing? He's holding. He's, he's holding back air. We could look at it as he's practicing. Lots of support being shoved into his the area above his larynx, and his it's passing through his vocal cords, his primary cords. Go, 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 go. Now there. He's going up into a, a higher range, but he's allowing this engagement that he's, he's uh, gotten himself in the mood for. Ho, 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 hoo, hoo, and then if I were to get there, ho, 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 combine that with. Live in the break. Yeah! So you, we don't hear so much of a, a distinguished pitch. And we go from... Go back! Go back! Go back! Go back! Very good. He's, go, he's very good at getting his primary chords out of the way and using that holistic false chord engagement. Yeah, with some delay. Go back! That consistency that he has is unmatched. Good belt there. Hey! 
Now you heard that you heard that the end of that one note. Hey! He that was a good clean belt and you heard that grit start to creep in. Let your voice crack. Lean into that crack. Hey! Right? My my vocal my primary vocal cords are opening. My false chords are engaging. Hey! Pitch is still there, though. Then he cleans it up with a note like that. Goes back to the yawn. There's no distortion. So he went from yeah to yeah. Amazing. Going back and forth, even in that little phrase from the yawn. And we went up to that higher note. He went into more of that brash, thin mix and added grit on top of that. Oh! Really fun to be experimenting with the different tonal possibilities, even within one line. Even that, that's probably one of the most fun things to try. Yawn! Yawn clean! Oh! And then open it up. La 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 la! Now there, he's very. This is what I was talking about. Where we were, you were using primary chord engagement. Uh, la la la! Those aren't very uh, high notes, but we're gonna trap them a bit with our false chord engagement. La 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 la! And then break in to a head voice every once in a while. Very playful. I just, I just feel, feel so. Free. I just feel so 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 free. All right. So that little section there, oh man, let's do it again. So he's using whistle register there to get that real high fry sound. I mean, it's definitely a, um, in the realms of that fry scream genre. But he's summoned his whistle register and is combining those two approaches, which is just incredible. Now, see my latest video, one of my latest videos on fry, vocal fry versus fry screaming. We're not using vocal fry to get that. We're using false chord engagement with the whistle register to get there. The, the stuff he's doing just prior to that... Right there, if we don't go for any particular pitch and allow ourselves to have that upper throat false chord engagement, as well as allowing our voice to break and then resting in that break. It's time! It's time! With a little bit of with a little bit of, of speech in there as well. You can hear what he's doing. Uh, you, you hear his normal voice, his normal belted voice in there, and then he's also adding those those screams sort of on top of it, and then disengaging his primary chords. Hey, it's time! It's time! And then he goes higher and higher. It's time! It's time! It's time! 
and lower at the same time, kind of going all over the place. And then he goes into those elusive whistle register screams, which are just incredible. So cool. And then we have the classically trained. Oh. So amazing. Notice how tension free he is. Listen carefully here. Okay, so this is one of my favorite kind of things to do. Set up a scream with an otherwise clean note. We're going to use the word forever. Forever! We're going to build up to it, and then we're going to let our voice break. Forever! Like, I can hit that note. Forever! I'm going to choose a note a little higher, because his notes, his, his... Note that's not a note that turns into a scream is even higher. Forever! Okay, so for, for is a good solid belted note. For, right? Then, instead of going forever and keeping the, the pitch the main focus, we're going to do this. Forever, forever. Let our voice crack a ton, and then when we find that area, forever, where we're resting in between the two, we're gonna lean into that, and then we're gonna bring the pitch up. Forever, and we have less pitch. We have more grit focus, less pitch focus. Yo, forever! 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 At the very beginning of this section, he's down here, uh, but he's trapping his air again with the area above his larynx. Uh, oh, yeah. This is a very James Hetfield thing to do. Yeah. And right there, he's not using any. La, 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 la. And the fact that he's singing that good while people are carrying it in. He likes to eat his microphones too while he while he performs. So this passage should really tell you a lot of things, but one of the things it should tell you is that a lot of the things that I'm talking about, like, you know, holding back air, using compression, finding your vocal break, and resting in, the, in, in that uncomfortable but yet can be comfortable in between, he's not thinking about all this stuff. There was absolutely, and you can tell by the way he is so uh, trained as well, there's absolutely been moments in his life where he's really practiced this stuff. But he's practiced it to the point where he's not, when he's performing and recording 
anymore. He's not thinking this way. He's developed muscle memory habits to the point that he can call up all this stuff, arguably better than any other vocalist on the planet, in my opinion. So just keep that in mind, though. When we analyze vocals and when we look at what they're doing and, and try to put it in our voice, we do have to kind of overthink for a while until some of that becomes muscle memory, until we've really worked it into our voice. Then we can forget the technical aspects and sing freely because that muscle memory remains. Hitting that pitch up there with that nice fry or compression breakup sort of sound. It's neat to hear him vocalize that way, even in the midst of this, those great pitches, even in the midst of riding on people. There he is eating his mic. What's amazing is how often he sounds so traditional and so, um, you know, almost classically trained and then breaks out of that in such amazing, seamless ways. I hope you took away some good things to work on with your own voice and some good perspectives as I struggled through some of these examples. That's really what working on your own voice is about, though. It's doing things that you're not necessarily comfortable with that maybe you would you would never want anybody to hear necessarily but as you take risks with your voice and you try things that are not inevitably there initially then you start growing you start exploring and as a result happy accidents happen things happen in your voice that would have never happened if you weren't trying to go for some of these out of reach sort of sounds that Mike Patton does. In my case, this is extremely beneficial. As I continue to work through what he does, particularly in those whistle register type screams, I'm, I may eventually get there, but I'm going to discover lots of other things that I can use in my own recordings and my own live performances based on inspiration from Mike Patton. Thanks so much for watching. Again, if you want help unpacking your own voice in a much deeper way, click that link below and join my free vocal course. We'll see you for more.